thank you for that uh, kind introduction. So I thought I would give you a little bit of a flavour of the work we do in the area of islet transplantation because we've been researching that area for about 10 years now and I've had a very long-standing collaboration with the National Pancreas and Islet Transplant Centre which is based out at Westmead. And so from them we obtain human islets used in the islet transplant program which we use for research. So we use some mouse islets and some human islets for our research program. Now, as Jerry uh, described really elegantly before, type 1 diabetes is the kind of diabetes where your immune system gets confused and blows away all of the beta cells in your pancreas. Now, the beta cells in the pancreas are the only cells in your body that are capable of making insulin. And insulin is the hormone that pushes down your blood glucose levels. So if you no longer have the, the beta cells in the pancreas, you don't have those cells that produce insulin, so your blood glucose levels go up. And so in type 1 diabetes, the immune system has wiped out the vast majority of those cells. You may have a few, so if you look at the entire pancreas, you might find 50 or 100 or even 1,000 of them, but you're supposed to have a couple of million of them. And so the treatment for type 1 diabetes is to take insulin. People take uh, multiple injections a day, or they have an insulin pump that uh, pushes the insulin in under the skin, which doesn't hurt, uh, constantly every day of their lives. And if they have type 1 and they don't take insulin, then they get a thing called diabetic ketoacidosis, or DKA, which makes them very sick and results in their going to hospital. Since the discovery of insulin in 1922, and then treatment of patients in 1923, which led to the Nobel Prize for the people who discovered it. The life expectancy of people with type 1 diabetes has, of course, improved massively. But it is still shorter by a few years than for people who don't have diabetes, partly because of this trouble with the diabetic ketoacidosis. If you don't treat it, uh, it can be very dangerous. So this picture is a picture of isolated human islets. Uh, in the organ transplant program, an organ donor will have the pancreas collected and then uh, the whole pancreas, which is about this big, uh, will be perfused and then the islets will be isolated from the pancreas. Each individual normal islet is only a tenth or a quarter of a millimetre across, so this is really blown up. And all of the islets in your pancreas, the things that get blown away in type 1 diabetes, makes up only about a teaspoon. So it's possible to cure type 1 diabetes by replacing beta cells. You can either do this by putting in a pancreas transplant, by transplanting a whole pancreas, or potentially by transplanting islets. And this picture is actually of isolated human islets. They've been stained with this hot pink dye called dithazone. They're not normally this outrageous pink colour. And only living islets take this up. So the things that are pink here are living human islets. The white stuff is either non-islet tissue from the pancreas, so the stuff that makes you digestive enzymes, or in a couple of cases, islets that are very sick, like this thing here, and aunt comes along and goes, you, you're not working hard enough. You need to do more. So it tells the insulin, for example, that it needs to make more insulin. And it might tell the HNF4-alpha that it needs to make less of that. So they're master regulators. Transcription factors will coordinate the whole program. They're like looking down on the factory floor and going, if we don't make more of that car part, we won't actually have enough bits to put the entire car together. We'll be missing two wheels. And so it's an interesting idea, at least, that if you can get a handle on a good transcription factor, you may be able to improve the overall function of the system, <coughs> as opposed to just tinkering with one nut in the corner, one bolt in the corner. And at least that's what we were hoping when we started with this system. We're interested in a particular pair of transcription factors, which happen to be called ANT and HIF1-alpha. They work together. I've had many years of practice 
saying that this one is called aryl hydrocarbon receptor nuclear translocator and that the other one is called hypoxia inducible factor 1 alpha. Their names aren't for this purpose important. But what is important is that we tested the effect of these two transcription factors to see if altering them would affect islet transplant outcome. And because you never start these studies in people, we started the studies in mice. And you can use a lot of really nifty techniques in mice that you can never do in people. So we took out aren't just in the beta cells in mice. And you can do that. So the rest of the mouse is normal, but the beta cells of the mouse lack aren't. And then we decided to look at what effect that has on transplant outcomes. So if you do islet transplants of normal islets or islet transplants from mice that lack aren't, this master regulator, just in the beta cells, what happens? Well, it's not pretty. So these are the brothers of these mice. So they're related. Um, they're the control animals from the same experiment. And just like the islets that I showed you from the normal donors, they cure the recipient mice beautifully. But if you lack aunt in the donated islets, the transplants are a disaster. So the glucose control here is really terrible. It never improves from the awful baseline. And if anything, it's even getting worse as you go out to the end. So if you don't have this master regulator aunt appropriately present in your beta cells, in the insulin producing cells, when you do an islet transplantation, it doesn't work. So then we took out the other half of the transcription factor in different mice, again, just in beta cells. So if you take out this transcription factor just in beta cells of mice, what happens? And again, the control mice do really nicely. So start at a frankly diabetic glucose level, you transplant them, and they return to beautifully normal glucose levels and stay there. But if you don't have this master regulator in your beta cells, when you do an islet transplant, then the glucose levels do badly and they're deteriorating back to right back to the baseline of frankly diabetic by the end of the study period. So if you lack either half of that transcription factor when you do an islet transplant, the outcomes are terrible. <coughs> now this is all very well, but I'm not here to try and cure mice. I'm uh, hoping to try and help some people. So we're obviously not wanting to decrease these transcription factors because I've just shown you that that's terrible. And we have a drug which we can treat the isolated islets with. So if you think of that picture I showed you back at the beginning of all of those isolated islets sitting in a tissue culture dish being pink because we've stained them with the pink stuff, then we have a drug that we can put in that bag when they're sitting there before the transplant which increases the amount of HIF1 alpha. So what we did was we treated islets, and we've done, we did this in mice first, and then we did it with human islets and transplanted them into mice. So all we've done to these human islets is either treated them with just the normal protocol, or we've treated them with the stuff to increase the expression of the transcription factor that I've just shown you was a disaster when we took it out. So. If we transplant lots of human islets, some human islets just don't work because they got beaten up too much before they got isolated, or the person was too sick before they became an organ donor, or maybe they were about to get diabetes. We just don't know, but some human islets just don't work. So we get about a 75% cure rate in mice from human islets when we use enough human islets. But if you don't put enough islets in, you don't cure the mice. So if you put in 2,000 islets, you routinely cure about 75% of the mice that you're transplanting. If you put in 600 islets, you don't cure the mice. And then what we did was we put in 600 islets from the same donor. So it's the same, the same uh, islet donor as these mice, 
And the only difference is that we've treated these islets with the substance to increase HIF1 alpha. And here we get a success rate of 70%. 600 islets versus 2,000 islets. And we're getting a success rate, and here this is not different. I haven't put in a slide because we don't have um, heaps of time today, but the glucose control in these two sets of mice is the same. So we can use a third of the islets and achieve the same outcome using this. So the really exciting part of that is that this drug is approved for human use. So we've done that. And this drug is now being used in human islet transplants out at Westmead. And along with a number of other important changes to the way we do islet transplants, our five-year success rates for human islet transplants are now at 50%. So that we're achieving um, insulin independence in about 50% of people out at five years. And in people who are still able to take the immunosuppressives who get a successful islet transplant outcome in the first place, their hypo unawareness is still gone at five years. Obviously, 50% instead of 20% is a fantastic improvement, and we're very pleased with that. But we're still looking at a number of other ways which look pretty promising to further improve the islet survival after transplantation. But what I'd really like to put out to you, which I think is really exciting, is that researchers around the world, and there are dozens of them, including us doing some work in this area, are getting closer to making artificial beta cells. So they can now make cells that actually make insulin, and they can make human cells that make insulin, and they will release it in response to glucose. They can't yet make human beta cells that release insulin in response to the right glucose, so they're not useful yet. And they can't yet make safe ones, but we're getting closer. So sooner or later, we are going to have a replacement beta cell source. And when we get that source of replacement beta cells, we're gonna to need to be able to transplant them into people in a way that they won't die. And so all of these ways to improve transplant outcomes are suddenly going to be critical because it's a potential treatment then for everybody with type 1 diabetes, not just the people who have really excellent kidneys and severe hypoglycemic awareness. Because once they crack the replacement beta cell, potentially it's a cure for everybody. And that's where I wanted to stop. <laughs>